So as we find ourselves back in Kawagoe's office with the information that we gathered from the karaoke club, I guess it's a good opportunity to check out the hotel and see what we can find out there. Right off the bat, though, Davy notices that it is inexplicably quiet, much the same way that the karaoke club was, but I guess I can be a little bit more understanding. We might have come here at an odd point in the day for people to be checking into a hotel. Still, we are going to have to use a little bit of subterfuge much the same way that we had to use at the karaoke club. As Ren did call ahead to the hotel and confirm that Oyama did stay here, but to gain access to his belongings and things like that, she's had to lie to them and tell them that we're his older brother, which I don't really see that working considering I'm pretty sure we're about 20 years younger than Oyama. I guess we're going to have to ring the bell for proper service. Or just get completely ignored. That, that's fine. The register is right here. We can just go ahead and read that. And it does appear that Oyama did stay here in room 704 a year ago, so... That would be where we're heading, but we do get a new game update. Seems we find ourselves in an RPG inn that has a very peculiar policy which is not allowing any non-humans into the hotel. Now that is interesting because we haven't really seen any non-humans in the RPG world. But also right off the bat we get the faceless body part that we should be looking for. Glad it wasn't hidden because there are a few things hidden in this hotel, namely this very long note. Now this note pretty much gives us an outline of what we're going to have to be doing in the hotel. The manager, with his non-human policy, seemingly let in some very strange customers who fed on nothing but raw meat. And then while these strange customers were let in, several of his other customers started disappearing. And wouldn't you know it, those strange customers happened to be demons in disguise. And at that point, it was a bit too late for the manager, so he had to find some way to escape. And it's going to be up to us to find this place that he escaped to and hopefully give him some assistance. And to that end, he decided to untrust us with a very special key. And it's with this key that we are going to be able to transverse this RPG hotel and hopefully make our way to the manager and save him from these horrible demons. And much like the game world, we now get some access further into the hotel ourselves, but... I mean, there's an elevator right here. We could just go ahead and go up to the seventh floor. Though, obviously, it can't be as easy as that. But, as we seem to be in the employee break room, something helpful could be in here. outside of this malfunctioning boombox. It does look like something's on the far wall there.
And as if we needed any help looking for it, there are some helpful handprints to show us the way to what appears to be a key ring with the keys we just happen to be looking for. There we go. We now should easily be able to get up to the seventh floor and check out Oyama's room. Yeah, there is a little bit of a problem as the elevator seems to have other plans for us. But even though it does seem that we've ended up on the wrong floor, we do get a ghostly guy to show us that maybe we're still on the right path. And as we head into the first hotel room, it does seem pretty spacious, but most of the doors in here are still very much locked, so we're going to have to look in the main bedroom area here to try to find a clue. And here on the desk, we do find a note. And it seems that whoever was staying in this room happened to be visited by Oyama. A very, very suspicious looking Oyama. Very surprising they would have let him in, but that Oyama was always a charmer. Still, it doesn't really look like there's anything else in here of interest. Just a normal hotel room, albeit very empty. Though, it might only initially have seemed empty. Yeah, as our path out of the room seems to be blocked, I guess we'll need to investigate this game update on the TV. As we find ourselves on a new floor of the RPG Hotel, seems we found another note from the hotel manager, as he's still being chased by those horrible demons. And here is where we get our first good look at these RPG demons. Now, in much the same way as the guards or any of the other enemies and other previous RPG sections, they will kill us if we get near them, but it's definitely not a permanent death. And we just have to get around that simple patrol, and we get another hidden stair key. Also, we're going to wait for him to continue his patrol so we can go ahead and pick up that cursed cartridge. There we go, we can now access the next floor of the RPG Hotel. Likewise, I think it's probably a good indicator that we too should probably 
head back to the elevator and see if it can take us to another floor. This takes us to the floor where we're actually wanting to go. I think the room we were looking for was 704. Which doesn't seem to be either of these rooms. getting captured by that regret. We find ourselves on a another new floor of the RPG Hotel. Things get a little bit more complicated here, as we do have to avoid two of these patrolling demons. The one good thing to keep in mind with these demons is that their capture radius is actually one block to the four cardinal directions, so you have to be a little bit careful. But here we do find another note from the manager. Seems that the demons are indeed closing in on him as he makes his way to that hidden room. And it seems that he was attacked by one of the demons, causing a wound that just does not seem to heal. As it seems that both of these doors are a dead end, I guess we're going to have to try another floor to get to room 704. I do find it in... Very curious hotel design to only have each floor be two rooms, but there could easily be more to the hotel than we're seeing. And we get plenty of indicators as to where we need to go here. Especially with the sound of that shower playing, we probably need to head into the large walk-in shower. Pretty spacious all around. Something seems to have plugged up the tub itself. But, as with most other situations, there is a good chance that the way to solve this problem is located in the game. But first, another easily obtained cursed cartridge. And as if we needed some hint as to what we needed to do, well, the, the hotel manager did leave behind a helpful note, which was that we just need to pull the plug to drain the water. Before we get to that, though, there is another cutscene to look at.
So that was slightly different than what we saw in the karaoke club, but the end message still seemed the same, though still no idea what all that could possibly mean. But instead of a normal plug in the RBG hotel, it seems that the bathtub does drain via a chest. And yeah, the hotel manager seems to be getting worse and worse as we progress through. Could possibly be due to that wound that he suffered by one of the demons. And yeah, the hotel manager seems to be reverting to some type of feral state. Seems to be turning into a demon himself. That shouldn't stop us from finding a hidden stair key and still making our way towards him. And likewise, in the real world, we do find another pretty lengthy note. Though this one is a little bit harder to read. So after getting a little bit of a red shower, seems that we're going to have to head down to the basement for possibly another key. So it's probably best not to rush out, as it seems like there might be a regret out there. But we do hear that very familiar music guiding us, but... I'm not totally sure where it might be coming from. Yeah, it seems to be coming from this closet. That could very well be that key that was mentioned as being down in the basement. As you can imagine, the basement doesn't have the same level of upkeep as the rest of the hotel. Right off the bat, though, we do find this odd cabinet with a double lock. So that means somewhere in this particular room is going to be two keys which would normally be hard to find if it wasn't for the fact that we get the handprints to show us where to go. There is another small problem though in that there are a few very dangerously placed regrets in this room. And even though they do get very, very close to where the keys are located, it's not too difficult to avoid them as long as you manage to not try to explore the room too, too much. Though, obviously, with the way that 
jump scares and the audio work in this game really, really becomes disorienting. You just never really know where a regret might pop up. Still, though, we have found the two keys that we needed to open the cabinet. And inside we find what I assume to be the key we were looking for. I really enjoy the usage of the RPG in relation to the real world in this game. Works out a lot better than the much more cryptic way that the RPG worked in the first game. I mean, in this game, in the RPG section, we're in a haunted hotel, and in the real world, we are in a haunted hotel. And our inevitable efforts in both were to find what I. I guess is this hidden staircase. That can only mean that we're getting closer and closer to the manager's hidden ho hidden hotel room. Seems like the right place, but looks like there's a pretty large blood stain on the bed there. There's really not much else to this room, so we could leave, but I don't know. I mean, blood stain is just calling to me. though it's very obviously a trap. But sometimes in the end it's really good to go with those motivations to investigate, such as in this room with this very large eye-catching painting. As hidden on it is another cursed platforming section that we'll need to use. Yet again, not terribly difficult in the setup, it's more or less just in the execution. Yeah, it's just a simple matter of keeping forward momentum and jumping. That does seem to be the extent of the manager's secret room, but we're not any closer to solving what's going on here or finding Oyama. seem that we have reached our final mysterious destination. No longer 
have any idea what floor we might be on, but I don't think we're in the real world any longer. But I definitely get the feeling that we are on the right track. Yet another audio clue. This time, instead of the walk in bath, we're going to be checking out the bathroom itself. Almost immediately, we are set upon by a demon. But we do want to get this cursed cartridge, though getting it will cause us to get killed one more time. Though initially, it seems like we are getting away. The one thing to keep in mind about this particular demon is that it's a lot faster than it initially seems. It just takes a little bit of time for its momentum to get up, and well, you have to be pretty precise to escape it. Still, as long as you're running constantly in the section and manage to not mess up any of the turns, you can get a pretty good head start on it. The question is, though, normally those RPG sections have mirrored something that we have to do in the real world, but don't really see that mirroring, mirroring anything in the hotel. The good thing is that where we need to go isn't really hidden. ourselves in a similar looking but note filled room. And we finally stumble across what I assume to be our notes from Oyama himself. He seems to be trying to figure out just what correlation the hotel deaths have with the cursed game. And he comes across some pretty interesting ideas, namely that Sometimes, I guess, just being within the vicinity of the curse game could cause you to die from it. You don't have to necessarily play it yourself. In addition to that note, there is one final note here on the bed. This note from Oyama gives us the bone-chilling idea that, granted we've seen very solid visible regrets, which seem to be the amplification of malice and hatred of these ghosts. But there also could be the possibility that sometimes these manifestations could not really be visible, possibly even with Davy's magical left eye. So, quite possibly in the future, we could be dealing with almost invisible regrets. But 
what we've really come in here for is to investigate the source of that game music, which is this odd TS. And as you could probably assume from the notes and just the general location, this is Oyama's TS. And we are given pretty much the exact same setup as at the end of the karaoke club, without the general air of mystery as to who we are inevitably going to be talking to at the end of this maze. Still, as with the end of the other maze and the end of the other section in the karaoke club, you do want to make sure and pick up the cursed cartridge here at the end. And, much like with the karaoke club, they don't straight out name Oyama here, but we already know that's who this is. Though, what he is exactly getting at is still, overall, pretty cryptic. But yeah, you can see it a little bit better there with the encroaching, distorted darkness. That will catch you if you do happen to wait too long, or take too long getting through this maze section, but... We're pretty quick to get out of it. In much the same way that we saved Oyama before, our TS now has this odd little house icon. Thank you. 